How does this world work? Is there a way to describe it in a concise way? You probably thought about it. I know I certainly did, and so many scientists and philosophers all around the world are pondering about this too. Today you will see one of the approaches to answering these questions called the ECE theory. First, a little philosophy and introduction for someone who knows not much about physics and exploration of how this theory works intuitively. Then I will show you math starter pack for it. As Gödel's theorem of incompleteness says, any formal system is either incomplete or contradictive. So that means, at least for me, no matter how fully we can describe the world, there will be always an unpatched hole, something yet unexplainable. So let's not try to describe the whole world then, let's just focus on what's useful. What is useful for us then? From what we know now, the universe is governed by four fundamental forces, and if we unify them, we could get so many new theoretical insights and practical applications, we could get a uh, yin and yang like reciprocal interaction between the fields, and uh, what's most important for me personally, we get to know the world we live in better. So what are those four forces? First is electromagnetism, and this needs no explanation, we learned it at school, we are used to it all around us, and so on. The second force is the strong nuclear force, the force that holds protons and neutrons together, the particles that are even smaller than the nucleus of the atom. This force is carried by gluons, although only an indirect experimental proof of their existence has been achieved. The weak nuclear force is the third one. It is responsible for radioactive decay and has been shown that it is essentially the same as electromagnetism at very high energies. Thus, these two forces are said to be already united. And fourth, gravity. But it doesn't fit with the other three since it's regarded as the curvature of space-time. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. General relativity has demonstrated to work a lot of times. But it also has its flaws, uh, for example, it is able to describe the structure of spiral galaxies only. There have been many, many approaches and suggestions to uniting these forces. Like, what if we bring gravity of general relativity into quantum world? What if we try to quantize gravity? What if we try to something completely different? List goes on and on and on and on, but uh, we're going to stop at ECE that is more like the last approach. This theory is a three-layered cake. First E is Einstein, who gave us general relativity. The C is for Elie Carton. He saw that not only gravity can be explained as curvature of space-time geometry, but you can also use torsion of space-time to describe electromagnetism. And from the perspective of differential geometry, it's the same thing. Today we are going to cover so-called tetrad postulate, from which we can go onto the third layer. But still, having these two guys, two very smart guys, wasn't enough to formulate a unified theory. Like there is no explanation on how to extend Maxwell's theory consistent with general relativity. The connection was suggested by Evans, which is the final layer in this cake. Just for some motivation, this theory explains how it's possible to obtain energy from space-time, what is needed to get under gravity, how gravity, like electricity, has its own magnetic counterpart, and same as in magnetism, it shows itself whenever an object with mass is moved or rotated. It makes fully deterministic quantum mechanics, and Heisenberg principle is just statistics. It predicts quantum effects without assuming them as a postulate from the beginning, Electromagnetism and weak forces are combined, the strong force and gravity are derivable from other geometry, and so on and so forth. Now, it would be a great time to explain what this theory is all about. But you better know some math before we continue, it will be much easier. What helped me tremendously is this playlist. Go watch it, you can stop at like chapter 23. I could go into explaining all those things here, but it would be a prerequisites class rather than explanation of the theory itself. You get what I mean, just go watch it. First of all, relativity wants you to think in terms of space-time curvature. This theory adds a little twist. It has not only curvature of space-time, but also spin or torsion. 
Every force, every particle within itself has a combination of curvature, symmetric component of tensors, and torsion, anti-symmetric component. But the pros in physics probably start to realize that there is no torsion-free property. And that is a huge difference. Because at least some of the solutions for the Christoffel symbols won't vanish. So for example, uh, the curvature is different and you can't have a Riemannian geometry because of that. Cosmology is different, Big Bang is no longer a thing, the Bianchi identity has to be redefined and so on and so forth. So hopefully you start to see the picture. This theory is in a lot of sense about an acceleration of that little difference when there is torsion. Another difference though, maybe not that exciting but very important and also convenient in development of the theory is what's called tetrads. And this is where we're going to start our math journey in exploring that theory. I didn't see any popular explanation of what that is, only in some really fancy language. So this is our rough map of equations, and as you can see in the center, the starting point is the tetrad postulate. This will be our goal for today. After that, you can see it's possible to go to Evans' wave equation, which at least can show us how gravity and electricity works together. In this equation, this is a covariant derivative, just written differently, and this is a tetrad. You can think of it as an advanced Jacobian, uh, a transformation matrix from one coordinate system to another, as in this example, a 90 degree rotation. And in case of 4-dimensional spacetime, we have a 4x4 transformation matrix. We will use it as a map from spacetime manifold to a flat tangent space. And as you can see in this example, the same vector v can be written out both as v mu with manifold basis and as a va but with tangent space basis. It is the same vector but the components is what's different and we specify that by writing different indices. And the tetrad q mu a can be used as a transformation between them. Notice that I use Greek letters for describing things in the manifold and Latin letters for what's in a flat space. And in a similar way we can define the inverse tetrad and q mu a will equal q to the minus 1. Let's see another example to get more used to that symbol. If you want to define a conversion from Minkowski metric to a metric that of a base manifold, we do it like this. And that can be generalized to a tensor of any rank. If we multiply a tetrad with its inverse, we get the number of dimensions but it's a convention to equate it to 1, therefore an additional coefficient is needed for computations. That's why we have n here. Also, it will be pretty useful to know these rules. Okay, time for some example. Let's say we're talking about a simple two-dimensional case. A transformation rule or a Jacobian will be this matrix. But the tetrad will be this. So it could have been the same as Jacobian, but we have an additional factor as we defined above. Let's look at the tetrad postulate again. We still can't compute it because we don't have a definition for covariant derivative of a mixed tensor. For that, let's first take a look at the covariant derivative of a vector in the tangent space. Just a reminder, this is how we will define a covariant derivative of a vector in the base manifold. Remember that all these Greek indices mean that it's all about the base manifold. So the first term on the right hand side is just a regular partial derivative. And in the second term, gamma is a coefficient of tangential change of our vector. And I should know that for any covariant derivative, all of the right hand side is multiplied by some chosen basis. But since these equations are covariant, in this sense of differential geometry, they keep their form for any chosen basis. So we sometimes just omit it. And that's how we define the covariant derivative in a tangent space. Notice the Latin letters and also that it has a different connection, spin connection. And why is that you may ask? Those who know something about spinners know that this is a pretty useful symbol. But for those who are like me, who know nothing about it, look at it this way. First of all, spin connections connect vectors in tangent space and Christoffel symbols connect them in the manifold. But as you remember, it is the same vector and we just use a different measuring stick to describe the identical things. Omega connections only work in orthonormal space like this tangent space and Christoffel symbols are used in holonomic or curved space. 
Now we arrive at the covariant derivative of a mixed tensor. They are defined in a way so that the indices of the tangent space are accompanied by a spin connection and the indices of the base manifold by a Christoffel connection. For example, and one little note, the summations over the lower or covariant indices have a minus sign. Now we're almost on the finish line, but we still have to derive some things, namely the equations between omega and gamma connections. So as we develop, the same vector and its covariant derivative can be written in different ways. For the work that we're going to do, we will specify the basis. So this is the manifold basis and this is the tangent space basis. So let's change VA and VB for QAV and QB lambda as we learned to be possible when discussing tetras. And I also changed the basis by the same rule, so I hope you don't mind. Then we move the tetrad to the left and expand the derivative by usual derivative rules, so x prime y plus y prime x. Now we plug in this tetrad into the brackets, so after this let's change some summation indices. We're gonna change sigma for nu, and since there is already nu, let's change it for something different, let's say lambda. The first term will vanish, and I will have this at the end. Now we'll factor out this vector and does this look familiar to you? All this led us to realize the fact that this is like this thing. So this must be Christoffel symbols, and indeed it is. Now we have a sacred knowledge how to get them if we have spin connections. So previously I started explaining here why we have VA, a Latin index, but we describe it with the base components. And instead of that, I'm just gonna say, after all, all these indices is just convention. So I wouldn't worry much about it. But who knows, maybe it is important. So le let me know in the comments. Now let's do the opposite thing, find the spin connections. Let's just multiply both of the sides here by Q lambda C. And let's again change some of the indices, change B for C. And now these two tetrads will eat each other out. Similar things happen if we multiply by Q, B, nu. After renaming indices again and putting the term on the other side. Nice, but do you want to see something cool? Let's go back to the Christoffel symbols formula. Multiply by Q, C, nu, get the Kronecker deltas here and here, pulling it out, and then it will eat the C index, giving us this. And now the ultimate flashback. Take a look at the covariate derivative of a mixed 1 1 tensor. This is zero. Covariant derivative of a tetrad is zero. This is very similar to metric compatibility and sometimes said to be its equivalent or consequence. The main message is the same though vectors shouldn't change under a coordinate change. You can also see it as a constant, non-changing Jacobian. No matter where you're standing, the way we go between this notion and this one shouldn't change. And that will get us to einstein cartons theory. To be able to go to einstein carton evans though, we need to discuss evans lemma and evans wave equation. But uh, I want to see how this video goes, and if you like it, I'll continue. And as with many attempts to create a unified theory, there is lots of criticism. I won't discuss them in this video, because honestly I don't understand it, but hopefully I sparked enough motivation in you to make you explore this on your own.